So we're here at the Siatek show, and hi, so who are you? Hi, my, my name is Mike Tanahashi. I'm the uh, uh, marketing, technical marketing manager and at uh, uh, Tayo Yunden is a big company making many products. Well, it is actually, uh, we are the one of the most largest uh, passive company manufacturer worldwide. We have about, I think, uh, revenue is about two billion US dollars annually. So uh, there's many different products around here. Here's uh, some, for example, and hi. So who are you? Yes, uh, my name is he uh, Henry Tagawa, uh, module business uh, planning uh, manager. So these are our products uh, integrated into uh, ARM processor inside, uh, Bluetooth modules and Wi-Fi. So uh, down here, for example, there's some very low power, and um, it says here you're integrating with um, Nordic. Yes, uh, all of Bluetooth Low Energy modules, we are using a Nordic uh, SOC, integrated uh, ARM processors inside. So what is, is just for Bluetooth uh, solutions? Uh, and there you have some other ones there? Uh, we also have a Wi-Fi, uh, this uh, the blue PC board, uh, which integrates uh, ARM uh, M4 uh, processor as well. And that's a different uh, supplier? Or? Yes, it's a Marvel. Marvel, and uh, the sub one gigahertz? Sub one gigahertz, uh, I have no idea. So there's some <laughs> other solutions? Probably, yeah. Yes. And uh, in this corner you're showing many of the smart home solutions, many cool integrations. You have uh, stuff happening in this robot here. Uh, what do you do with this? Uh, this is another small robot uh, running on the you know tablet, like this. Uh, what's the application? On the, you know, Whoa. Does it mean it has a little camera? It can recognize where it is? I think uh, some you know, sensors. Inside. The sensors. And uh, also uh, the Bluetooth function. Uh, Bluetooth, arm with Bluetooth module is integrated on the top. Uh, the Ah, it does the capacitive uh, trigger, yeah. and then the app reacts based yes. on where it is. And the connection between uh, you know the Bluetooth communication between tablet and uh, the, this small robot. Nice. And here you have a little duck. What does the duck do? So, take a motor. Trigger something. You can, yes. What do you yes. do with this? Yes. What is in here? Okay. What happened there? So, we're going to use connectivity inside uh, this, you know, yeah. the transparent hole. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, you're already selling. Ooh, nice. What is this uh, CPU here? What's going on here? Is this one of your Bluetooth solutions there? Yes. Yeah. And uh, nine axis uh, accelerometer inside. And during this, you know, uh, the runs from top to bottom, yeah. you know. Every, it's know, tracking the whole yeah, thing. Direction uh, is showing on the tablet. And uh, and here's some other. What is this? It's like a. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> ah, this is better chicken. Is it hot? Hot chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot, hot chicken. Yeah. Yeah. So you touch here and you touch here and it knows your heart or what? Uh, if you, 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 you have enough time, just take a seat. Yeah. Here. Can you try? Yeah. Would you, would you try? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me? Yeah. So what happened? What need to do? Only sitting? Only sitting, just sitting. There's yeah. a sensor in the seat? Sensor inside, yeah. And what happened? Where can you see? Uh, there. Storage check system. So what? Storage check system. So checking somebody there? Yeah. yeah. Only this? Uh, only, only this, yeah. Yeah, so can you show? All right. Now check. No, so oh. checking if, uh, for example, the elderly is uh, exercising, moving. Ah, uh, please, please keep silent. Keep silent. Yeah. How is your feeling? Feel good? Are you tired? Do you have enough stress? They can check. It can sensor can check that. Yes. How are you feeling? No. Just on the seat. Yeah. No. There's check. a sensor inside the seat. Sensor inside the seat. Can we see? Yeah. Can we see the sensor? Inside. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Nice. This so that is result, result. Nice. Result. Nice. Relax. You relax. You relax. Okay. That's good. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank All you. right. So you want to go to the RF devices here? So uh, what are you showing in this corner? Yeah. Okay. These are the so-called the RF device. Yes. For example, yes. smart smartphone. Yeah. Can you hold this up? Yeah. Sure. So this and this. 
Yeah. Our, fo our focus is right here, actually. Yeah? Yeah. It says RF, uh, radio frequency devices. F bar, so ceramic. What is F bar? It's a film bulk acoustic resonator. It is a part of a uh, uh, filter, filtering devices. Yeah, and this is so filter. So it's acoustic wave type of filter. This is also a filter. Yeah. In the ceramic, it's, it is a multi layer uh, ceramic type filtering devices used in RF uh, circuit block and especially on a smartphone. It's very small pieces of this. Yeah, these are antennas, the chip antennas, very small, tiny antennas. You can find it in a lot of different uh, wireless products. So these uh, tiny little F bars, um, how do you integrate them into electronics? It's very small. Yeah, these go into as is, as a discrete, as goes into sometimes goes into module. Yeah, the thing is, if you look at that uh, chart over there. Yeah. 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 So uh, there's a chart. Um, Stand here. So can you explain what does this show in the chart? So with, with the 5G uh, coming up real soon, right? Actually, is starting as as we speak. With the 5G, what's going to be happening is the frequency goes up, and also the frequency bandwidth will be much wider than before. And what's required is the device can actually withstand in the higher frequency range. And the Taiyune owns uh, three different R technologies: one soft filter technology, one F bar, one multi-layer ceramic technologies. So especially for the ceramic technology, that can actually fulfill the requirement from the uh, very low frequency to uh, high frequency like a millimeter wave, such as 28 or 39 gigahertz used in 5G. And also talking about the wider bandwidth, the ceramic filter technology can actually fulfill that uh, very wide uh, bandwidth. And also we can, Toyota has the ability to uh, combine the different technologies together. So, so it can provide very unique performance. So this is uh, in the Receiver or in the transmitter? Both, both. But it's for the, uh, especially for smartphones. This Smart goes in the smartphone. Smartphone. And also in the base bound, but base stations. Some, some. It's actually quite different kind of uh, technology. But uh, we, for the, especially for the 5G, the base station becomes so small. So if that's the case, the same similar type of product can be used for that baseband as well. Is this showing some of the other stuff that happens? Yeah, this, around? Is, this is different. So power this, is, this is part of stuff. And what is this stuff here? Well, this can basically is for a, a small you know, footprint uh, inductors and the capacitors. That's basically all goes into the uh, 5G related smartphone and uh, let's say base station as well to support the overall 5G ecosystem. So, are you in many smartphones, your technology? Basically, Every smartphone will have our products in it. Every? You name it, Every. everyone use our. So without our, especially for the capacitors, they cannot make any smartphone, period. How is it possible that it's just you doing everything? Huh? You're the leader, market leader for this. One of the leaders. Can you show us some of the capacitors? Yeah, let's go yeah. to the capacitor section here. So this is the capacitor section. We call yeah. it MLCC, which is multi-layer ceramic capacitor. Yeah. And uh, what Taiyurin does, uh, revenue-wise, is about two billion US dollars, and uh, more than fifty percent is coming from a capacitor business. Is this capacitor? What yeah, is this? these are capacitors. So this very little tiny, right? You can't even see it. It it's looks like salt right? grains. Yeah, it looks like sugar. That's right. Even smaller than sugar, probably. So this one is probably less than the sugar. It has so many layers. But what is it that I'm looking at? What, what is this stuff? Look, it's dust. You make right. dust. Yeah. Well, where do you put this stuff? That's right. Well, you know what we do is uh, we actually uh, uh, we use a ceramic, very thin, tiny, thin uh, ceramic sheet, and we print print the electrode over the ceramic, and we stack so many layers. And for example, if you take a look at this one, this one goes up to so-called 1,000 microfarad, and we produce a, uh, the highest capacitance available in the market. Look at this small case size. So we have more than 1,000 layers. So we stack 1,000 layers together, we stack it, and we make tiny uh, capacitors. This is it 1,000 layers in 1, this? 1,000 layers, yes. In that little box there? That's correct. But, so you stack 1,000 layers to help to do what? Is it to manage the power? To manage, or? yeah, that's right, that's right, power. And, and look at this one. This one is the world's thinnest. So as opposed to the next one, this one provides a low profile, very thin. We're talking about the 0.04 uh, millimeter. 
Is the world's thinnest? This is the world's thinnest. Nobody else has this one yet. So, uh, what is it, um, like let's say in a smartphone or in every other electronics in the world, has your stuff? Correct. And what does it mean to have a thinner one? Smaller electronics? Well, you know, for, for example, let's take an example of iPhone. They use about more than 1,300 capacitors in one iPhone, right? And, uh, well, of course, the real estate has become so small because a lot of uh, uh, the function has to be integrated. But they want a larger uh, battery size, larger the screen size. Then all the electronics component area is really minimized, so that we have requested to uh, develop a very tiny uh, capacitor, yet has very large capacitors. That's the key. And also for the thinnest, thinnest one, a lot of uh, capacitors used to uh, maintain the good stability of the voltage for the uh, C CPU, right? Processor. Okay. Yeah. Processor inside the processor, they they have uh, they only have a space uh, right underneath the uh, CPU. There is a very uh, thin profile area they can allow, so that we propose these very tiny thin uh, type of uh, capacitors. So that goes into the right underneath the capacitor. I mean uh, processor, CPU itself, and also this kind of uh, uh, thin capacitor can actually go into the substrate can be embedded into the substrate as well. So, um, the substrate, is that what you talk about, what's under the processor? That's one of them, yes, that's correct. One of them? One of them, yeah. So, um, is this a big news, or...? It is big news, yes, that's right. This that's is why we said that this is the thinnest. Because we before you were at 11, this is the 11 one? Or maybe not? This is the uh, world highest capacitance. Highest capacitance. This was the world thinnest. Which one is a, this one or this? So this one. This, this one, one there yeah. is a highest capacitance. <laughs> yeah. And this is the world's thinnest. Thinnest, thinnest right. Well, of course it's small, small X, Y, but the thing is, this is thinnest. And Nobody how long time does it take before the industry adopts this and changes? How, how long time does it take before it changes the world? You usually a couple years. So we start talking to, of course, uh, for our customers, for example, they have to have a capability to actually mount these, right? So what we do is uh, we, we, we work with, uh, we have collaboration with the uh, supplier or mounting uh, machinery, you know, equipment manufacturers, so that they can learn how to actually mount these products on the board. How does it get mounted? And who is the mounting company? And how does that work? Uh, that there are so many. That there is a different, uh, many. Is it like uh, a TSMC? Or something uh, like this? No, they, they put it there right is a the foundry SOC for the uh, different, different. The foundry. There's a foundry. We're not talking about uh, actually mounting, component mounting, mounting manufacturers. Mounting next to the chipset? Or next oh, yeah, to the next to the chipset, right, right. They may mount the chipset as well onto, onto the board. That's like an SMT kind of thing. That's correct, exactly. This is SMT, yeah. But it's, you can make an SMT that can manage 0.04 millimeter. There's a machinery equipment to actually physically mount on the board. We're in Japan right now. Maybe it's only Japanese company can figure out how to do an SMT for this? That's correct. Because it's I would think so, yeah. High precision. Yeah, highly. Extremely highly precision. <laughs> so what does it mean when we get this? What is it going to mean? Smaller electronics in yeah, general? Basically, the things can be uh, minimized. So the module can be minimized because they're talking about a lot of different uh, new power module or RT device modules. And uh, for the smartphone, for example, there's a lot of uh, different function is now included. So they, they want to see the very small, tiny component to be uh, integrated into the module. So these will help, definitely it will help. And so uh, capacitors are all about having stable power that constantly is the same amount. Uh, that's, yeah, that's correct. And if it doesn't that's go correct. like this, then electronics break. That's correct. I mean, CPU is going to break. CPU is break. Yes, that's right. All right. Yeah. So they're very uh, reliable. Uh, what is the history of Taiyun then? Has it been many years doing capacitors? Or? Yeah, we actually started with the capacitors back in 1950. So we have a long history. And we do manufacture from scratch. We actually develop our own material from the scratch. Actual powder, the material. So I think we had very few, only the few manufacturers worldwide. There's only one or two companies does this. In 1950, it was already ceramic based? Uh, I think we started uh, maybe ferrite, inducti inductive device, and yeah, I think ceramic too. We started with ceramic, large, big, bulky capacitor at the time, of course. And where, how does it look like the machine that makes this dust, magic dust? How does it look like? Uh, does it just make 
millions of them per second and just comes out of the machine quickly? Something like that, but these are ceramic. We have to start from green sheet, which is raw green, right? And we fire it, we fire it, just like a ceramic cup, right? The same thing, actually. Nice, and then cut it out? So yeah, we it could, yeah. cut somehow? Yeah, that's right. Before, before we fire it, we cut, you know, we press it and then we cut it in pieces and go through the, you know, the, the, the burning process and uh, we actually uh, get ceramic get sintered. Nice. And, and make a final product. And uh, here around, there's, there's many different products also. You're talking about automotive. Yes. And here in this area is um, all these components are about reliability, right? Yeah. This basically is the same as what you saw, but this has yeah. a more high reliability guarantee because this goes into the automotive applications. So then all these, uh, they have to last for 10, 20 years. Yeah, well, no, it depends on the customers, but uh, basically, yeah, it's many years. That's the guarantee. Because when you have a, an ele electronic well. system, and you say there's thousands of these inside, so if just one of them fails, there needs to be redundancies, right? Correct. To go correct. around the failure. Fail-safe, right? Yeah, correct. So there's all kinds of fail-safe Correct, it's just automotive, yeah. That's, that's, that's the must, yeah, must requirement. Nice. And uh, just around here a little bit, so when we look, Here's um, stuff that have to do with. Um, are you big in solar? You do many things in solar. Hi, can you talk about this? Yeah. So, so what is this solution here? Solar modeling. Ampere modeling. Voltage modeling. So this is for the the solar, and here's some other. So there's many, many different technologies all the way down here. Correct. And, right. um, are you one of the biggest companies, or? Yeah, we're one of the largest uh, passive company manufacturer worldwide. All right. And the other companies are, the competitors are also Japanese, or is some yes. other well, I can, countries? Yes, I, I can name it. Yeah. So we are Taiyu then, and I should say Murata. Murata is down, down road, down, down yeah. this hole over there. They, they actually, they are the probably the largest. Okay. They do uh, everything. And uh, we refer number two, and also TDK. TDK is a large com com our computers. It's also in a, somewhere in this whole. This number well. three, TDK. Number three, one number two. We we compete each other. You so compete to be number two. Murata, Tired, and TDK. Those are the major nice. three major passive component manufacturers worldwide from Japan. But there's nobody in China who can figure out to do this, or uh, I, in I, other places. I would say no. They do similar products, but they're still would say uh, way behind. All right. Cool. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.